Welcome back. And in this presentation, part number eight, we are going to be measuring the front apron as well as the back apron. Recap. The customer's waist is 34, the hips are 40. So, what I've got to do is I've got to halve that which is 17 and half that, which is 20. So we've already worked on the back and we know that those are perfect. So all I'm going to be doing now is taking the, the rest from the front and aligning it with the back. So on this tartan, you can see I've got a, a blue line, black line, blue line, black line, blue line, black line. Now with a four yard, you got very minimal tartan to work with. If I had taken the black line, exactly the same as the black on, on the back, I wouldn't have enough material. And here's the problem. All right, so let me find a middle line. Can you see that? So I need 17. I fold my tape in half. And that will give me eight and a half. So if I go eight and a half there on this red line, because you want a prominent line, let's move this one. Let's mark this. The 17 there. And that's what I've done there. All right, can you see that? So I've got 17 there and just out of focus, There it is there. All right. Now, what I want to do as a kilt maker, you want at least a hand width of material here for a nice heavy pleat. If you have a small one, then the front apron becomes very, very flimsy. So, may I suggest a nice, heavy, heavy hand. There it is there. Alright, there it is there, a nice, heavy hand. So, if I'm going to the front apron there, and I've measured from there to there, 17, it's eight and a half, eight and a half. So, I've got eight and a half on that side and eight and a half on that side. So here's my center line, this red line. I got eight inches down. Eight inches down. There's my center line. So these are the only measurements that I need. I've got my center there. Move eight inches down. I've got that mark there. Now, my hips are 20. So half of 20 is 10. So this side. I'll mark that. As a rough guide but then on this side here 20 there it is there there it is there so what's gonna happen now is I take this line and that line 
pinch the two together, fold it over and bring it towards my kilt. Grab the magic pins. And again, we're not, we're only just pinning just to get an eye overview, just to see what it looks like. So now I've got my kilt that looks like that. I've got the back. I've just pinned those. There's my front. There's the center. There's the end, and there's the end over there. So, technically, what should happen is my kilt should look something like that, and then go all the way down to... Can you see, with this piece here, with my hand, I've got enough just going in over there. And that's what I want. By me pinning this down and having the blue line as the center and not the black line as the center, it gives me enough material on the inside there. So that this at the bottom here forms a nice crease. So if I have too little material here, then the kilt isn't going to sit nicely. Then the outer apron will always be waving and it won't sit nicely. So you want a nice deep pleat over here. And again, I've got at least a, high, a, a hand and that will work perfectly. So this is the seam for the inner apron. This is the seam for the outer apron. The outer apron, it's showing me a blue line into green. And then over there, the red line. Blue line into green with a red line. So when I look at my Titan here, I'm going blue line into green with a red line. So it's that that there so that looks something like that I've got that side. Looking like that side. So we know that the, the back is 17. And then as I'm putting the tape out, the client is at 36, right? But when it's the inside apron, you always add another inch. Because this inch gets your, your belt strap, and then the belt strap goes into the buckle. But can you see now, I don't have that minimum hand width there. Can you see that? There's the end there. So what do you do? Let's put this into perspective. When I started pleating this, or when I started measuring this, I took one pleat from the left, from the right side, and put it in. Then one pleat from the right side, put it in, left, right, left, right. So there will always be more 
material on one side. Do you want more material on the inner apron or do you want more material on the outer apron? So that's a trick question. The answer is you want more material on the outer apron because you want enough material as a fold. Also, you want enough material on the inside in order for this to form a nice deep pleat. So can you see with the with the four yards, and this is exactly four yards of material, it doesn't fit. Can you see that now? So this side there with this color, although it matches with this side, it doesn't fit. Because there's not enough space down there for a seam. So what do I do? Now I'm going to move this out. Although this was a nice deep pleat, can you see it's nice and deep there? Now I've got to go for plan B. So this one there didn't work. Although this is nice and deep, this would have been fantastic if I had maybe another yard, which I don't have. Now, I can always sew something like this on the outside of that kilt. Because it's an inner apron, I might be able to get away with it. So we'll see what happens. So I'll leave that to one side. So now I've got to come up with a solution here. That's not going to work. So maybe I go from this side over there. So although it's going to be somewhat smaller, there will be enough over there. So let's have a look. So all I'm going to be doing now is I'm moving from that set there to that one there. I'm just jumping there to there. So that's going to be my new line there. So that there, talk about over there. So hold that. There. Something like that. Now, to be quite honest, only a keen person with a, a very keen eye will be able to pick that up. I've already made a four yard kilt and this is exactly the same problem that I came with mine. I did call the owner of this kilt when I initially bought the material from him and I said, oh, when you're going to be making this kilt, this is going to be the problem. So now we're going to look at something like this. So the outer apron will have a blue seam and the inner apron will have a black seam. Not a major drama. What can you do? You only got a certain amount of material to play with. But it will look nice and neat. So always err on the side of more material on the outer apron. Right, so we've got 17 there, and we want 38 there. So can you see 17 there? And we've got 38 there. So can you see, I've got at least a little bit there. Remember, this still has to taper slightly that way. So although it's tapered to there, just a rough taper, that's going to be folded in there. So there's not going to be much material there. But what I'll do is I will take, in order to give it a bit of fullness, I'll take this, I'll put it in there, and I will stitch that in nicely. And that will be another presentation when we get to it. So in summary, 
we've got 17 inches on the back the outer apron will be at 37 inches the outer apron with that center blue being the center line then if I scroll to this side my inner apron will have that black instead of the blue it will have slightly less material here but then I've got enough material over there in order to now finish it off if I moved it a whole set that way there that wouldn't have worked so we always want the we always want the outer apron to be nice and deep have that inside pleat which is going to look nice it's going to feel nice on the leg and fold it up nicely down at the bottom here this this is going to be fantastic so this is what we've done so our next presentation we're going to sew this seam and we're going to finish off the front all i want in this whole life a little red house in a country wide a picnic table out on the lawn a couple of kids and a couple of dogs work all day to half past five Yeah. 